Whether rendering out a final production animation or simply a preview animation, it is best practice to render an image sequence. And that'll prevent issues such as a movie file becoming corrupted if the rendering is interrupted. And in the previous movie, I rendered out a sequence for a preview, and those got saved into the previews folder in the current project. I'll go in there, and there's a subfolder for walkthrough, and here is the sequence of numbered PNG files. We can take a look at these one at a time using whatever viewer you have assigned to PNG documents. I'll double click on one of them. And I'm using the Windows Photo Viewer, but the default viewer in Windows 10 is the Photos app. We can see that there are some issues with a preview render. The background is looking very grainy. I'm not seeing the shadows that I expect to see on the ceiling here. I could work around those issues with a little bit of creative trickery. Likewise, I could apply some fakeosity or some fake diffuse bounces or global illumination to brighten up these very dark areas here. But that's a whole topic into itself, how to make a non-global illuminated shot look like global illumination. And that's a little bit out of scope for the current course. If you want to see some examples of what could be achieved using the preview renderer, take a look at one of my other courses, which is 3ds Max Cinematography for Visualization. And I had a lot of animation to render for that course, and therefore I used the preview render with the GPU with some special tricks to make it look better. So you can actually use a preview rendering for production. Let's now take a look at the image sequence in motion. I'll go back to 3ds Max, and to view an image sequence in motion, we can use the RAM player. It's found in the rendering menu under Compare Media in RAM Player at the very bottom. And the RAM Player window opens, and we need to load a sequence in. There are two channels here, channel A and channel B, and you can use those to compare two different image sequences. But in this case, I only want to see one. So I'll click on the folder to open a sequence for channel A. And instead of the render output, I want to go to the preview folder in my project. So I'll go up a level, go into previews, walkthrough, and select the first file in the sequence. Right now I'm seeing some thumbnails, so I'll just switch this over to a list. We can see that there are a bunch of numbered files. Select the first one, and then click open. We get another dialog asking which frames we want to load. Well, we want to load all of them, so I'm not going to change anything here. I'll just click OK. And we get another dialog asking, do we want to load these in at full resolution or do we want to knock it down? Do we want to limit the amount of memory usage and so on? I'm just going to take the defaults, which will load the files in at full resolution. Click OK. And those are being loaded into system memory. And that way we'll be able to play this back at 30 frames per second or really any frame rate we desire. Once that's finished, we can play it back. We can see that the frame rate here is 30 frames per second and simply press play. And again, there are some issues with the preview rendering and those are becoming quite apparent here once it's in motion. It's almost like we've got analog TV snow outside the window there. But again, I could have worked around that issue if I needed this to be an actual production rendering. I could have, for example, place a black object outside the windows there and that would prevent that background from looking so grainy. That's how to use the RAM player. We can go ahead and close it. We'll get a dialog asking, do you want to do this? Because everything that was in memory is going to be released. And yes, we do want to release that memory. And that's how to use the RAM player to view an image sequence.